Good morning. It's Monday, January 3rd in a brand new year, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, The Dog in Me. And our scripture is Job, chapter 42. When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. Then all his brothers, sisters, and former friends came and feasted with him in his home. And they consoled him and comforted him because all the trials the Lord had brought against him. And each of them brought him a gift of money and a gold ring. I recently read a version of a story that I've read and experienced many times. The storyline goes like this. Two dogs enter a room. Later, one emerges growling like a wounded wolf, the other smiling like a contented puppy. The question that sets up the punchline is this. What in the same room would make one dog happy and another hopping mad? Of course, the punchline is mirrors. A dog may not have the sentient awareness to know that he's looking at his own image, but he has the built-in radar to understand the danger or welcome signs he's seeing. It's a short leap from a dog story to my story. In a room full of mirrors that reflect my emotional state, my political views, my hurts, fears, joys, and all the other stuff that make up this dog called Russell, I'm going to bump into the real me. And no matter what I may think of the critter I behold, he is what he is. The United States has, besides Russell, 332,915,072 other people who have that same peculiarity. What we see in a mirror may make us mad or glad. It all depends on what we brought to the mirror. Job was no different than Russell, or you, or any of the other 7.9 billion human critters on planet Earth, past and present. Job's experience was pleasant at first. He was rich, respected, and led a good life. Looking in the mirror would not have been difficult. Then it changed. Hero became zero in an afternoon. His family, riches, and comfort zone were taken down like a house of cards in a windstorm. His so-called friends finished the task with 40 chapters of telling him it was his own fault. Now the end of Job's life was better by far than the tale of woe. But it's been puzzling theologians, skeptics, and scoffers for as long as humans have breathed. Why is it so that some dogs have so much to smile about and others growl? Job's answer is not about what happens to you, but how you respond to what has happened. Notice that the scripture tells us what Job did. He prayed for his friends. The group that sat with Job, poking their fingers on Job's sore spots, accusing him of some secret sins that brought the world of God's judgment down on him, that's the crew Job prayed God would forgive and bless. (laughs) Did that sound familiar? You may have heard it on a Sunday morning or read it in the life of someone else who was in on that conversation with Job, Matthew chapter 5. You have heard that the law says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. Jesus told his listeners, that's us if we'll hear, to do a tough thing. He told them to pray for those who persecute you and love them. But who can do that? I'm glad you asked. It's only the dog who brings a smile to the mirror. All the others will rip apart whatever's in front of them and be angry at the whole entire world for being so violent and harsh. For you today, what we see in a mirror is what we bring to the table. 
A good piece of advice is to make sure whatever we bring to the table is edible. Beat you on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.